All right, awesome. So we are live. So I want to be able to jump on here and start talking to people about not just narcissistic abuse, but about like the stuff that people struggle with in the relationship and also out of the relationship. One of the biggest things that people struggle with is this aspect of the trauma bond. The trauma bond is typically a piece that like locks people in, like locks people into a relationship where they're not able to actually get free. They're not able to actually move forward. They're not able to put themselves in a place of clarity of what's actually happening in the situation and how to continue moving forward from that. So like the trauma bond, like Kat, when you think of like the trauma bond, how would you describe the trauma bond to someone who's like in it, who's dealing with it at the same time? Yeah, I would describe it as basically an addiction. Like every cell in your body is going the opposite way of what your logical mind wants to go. Like you're like, I know better. I know better. But like, every cell in my body just wants to reach out or to, to talk to them. And so I would describe it as an emotional and a little bit chemical addiction, because depending on the emotion, it releases a chemical in our brain. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is comparable to an addiction. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I think that's like a, a big piece of it that it feels like an addiction of like always wanting to go back to that person, like time and time, like over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then it just feeds into it because then you do go back and then you're hit with the shame and the shame spiral. And then you're just, and then that makes you weaker and then you go back again and then it, it just adds to the addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. What, um, what would, I know, I know like talked about like a lot of the pieces that actually are inside the trauma bond is like hope, potential, cognitive dissonance, intermittent, rein intermittent reinforcement, if I can actually say it. Like you're going to be talking about cognitive distance on at the workshop that we have. You want to kind of touch on that just a little bit? Yeah. So cognitive dissonance is this this thing that happens naturally in our mind where we are conflicted. We have two conflicting thoughts or feelings or emotions, and then we come in with another thought to kind of relieve or allow the other ones to exist simultaneously in our body. And this is just something we do naturally, but when you're in an abusive relationship, it's like our mind is working against us. So the two conflicting thoughts could be something like, I really, really love this person. I've never felt love like this before. And then the other thought is that was just abusive. That behavior was just abusive or they, they hit me, right? They hit me, but I love them. So like that is not allowed in my body. Like I don't like mm -hmm. the way that that feels in my body. So I have to create another thought. Like, oh, well, maybe maybe that wasn't abusive. Or maybe I just saw that. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe I'm right. being dramatic. You know, and that's why it's important to journal. Because we do that. We come in with that third thought. And it's like we're playing tricks in our mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's huge. Lee, kind of how do you see that play in? Because, like, we all, we all talk to people, like, one-on-one. -on -one. How do you normally see, like, the trauma bond get shown up in people's lives like, when they're talking to you? Um, so typically when I'm, when I'm talking to people on, uh, like when I'm doing one-on-ones with people and they bring up the trauma bond, they don't typically, they don't use the word trauma bond. It's like, I just cannot leave this person. Why do I keep going back? Even though I'm getting treated horribly, why do I keep putting up with this? Why do I keep tolerating this BS just to have this person in my life? Why can't I just let go? So that's what the trauma bond sounds like to me. You know, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I typically tell people, it's like, why do I love this person even though they hurt me so much? And typically when they say they still love them, I, I kind of shut them down. I'm just like, uh, uh, mm, do you? Do you, though? Do you really? Mm -hmm. Do you really love them? It's like, yeah, I, just, I love them. I was like, mm, mm. I was like, I don't mm -hmm. think you love them anymore. And it's like, what? I was like, I think you're addicted to them. Honestly, it's like a drug. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's like a habit. Do people love heroin or they are, are they addicted to it? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, some there are some people who love heroin. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but they mm -hmm. some of them love it because of how it makes them feel. Just like when you're in a toxic relationship dynamic, you love it because sometimes it makes you feel good about yourself. You know, a lot of times people lean into it and this this is the only source of validation that they get. You know, they feel like they put this on this person like you're the only person who can validate me. And I need that validation for somebody else because I ask people, why do you love them? You know, why? What are you getting from this person? And they'll say something like, "Nothing." Like, not. Nah, mm, mm. You getting? Mm -hmm. mm, you sure you not, you nothing? You know, but so because people are typically getting something from it. I'm like you're getting something from it. That's why you, if you were absolutely getting nothing from this relationship dynamic, you wouldn't go back to it. You're getting mm -hmm. something from it. 
to is is it falls into you. It becomes your responsibility to figure out what you're getting from this relationship. I I, I tell people you got to keep digging. Ask, keep asking yourself the question why until you can't ask it anymore. Mm-hmm. Why do I keep going back? Keep digging. Keep digging. And sooner or later, it's kind of like you're digging for treasure. You're trying like you're digging for a treasure chest. Sooner or later, you're gonna be digging in the, in the dirt. And sooner or later, you're gonna keep digging. The... Doom, you doom, gotta doom. ask yourself doom, why doom. like five times deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doom, doom, doom. What's that? What am I hitting right here? It is you done dug okay. up the treasure chest of why you keep going back to this toxic person. You see what I'm saying? I open it. Oh, validation. Oh, my mom was toxic as hell. Oh, my daddy was. I never. My daddy neglecting me. Something like that. Right. You know, what I mean? it's, it's, there's a bunch of different reasons, y'all. But like, just keep digging. Yeah. That's I like so true, something cause... that Lee said. Can I just add to that really fast? Yeah, go for it. I like something that Lee said, which was like, "I gave you. You're giving them all your validation. Like, I, I'm giving this to you." Because I normally phrase it like the narcissist conditions us over time. But you're right. At the end of the day, there's something broken in us that just allowed us to give all the responsibility of validating who we are to this one person. Mm-hmm. What is yeah. it? Is it, is it? Yeah, no, I was like thinking like when, when Lee was talking about like the, like the why and like diving deep and trying to figure that out, because there's a lot of times, like when you dive deep, you start to realize all the different like things that you've been believing and the things you've been saying to yourself that are just completely untrue. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like an onion, right? Like you're peeling back a layer of the onion of like, wait a second, what's actually underneath. And like the first like outer layers of the onion are typically about the relationship, about the narcissist, about like lies that have been put on, put on you. Like through that, you start to like peel those back and you're like, wait a second. Now I see a little bit more clearly. Now I understand a little bit more of the truth. And then as it gets closer mm-hmm. and closer to like the core of the onion, it's almost like getting to the place of like, wait a second. Now the stories that I'm telling myself aren't about, him aren't about like the stuff that's happened but are about me about like lee was saying about like like am i good enough or about like childhood trauma but like about different things that are looking for like having this like validation of this piece of let me find this or let me seek this out in like other people mm-hmm. and just like when you put no no uh-oh lee, you froze I mean, at the end of the day, we have to become aware if we're putting our validation in somebody else. Are you back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, Yeah. I I had said a cool line to us, and just like peeling an onion, sometimes you cry. So, (laughs) done. The froze at the exact spot, like that whole thing is gone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just like peeling an onion. Sometimes you're gonna cry. The deeper you get, sometimes you're gonna squirt some juice in your eye. It's gonna hurt. There's gonna be some pain, some suffering, but you get through it. And sometimes, some people like onions, y'all. So. I'm not one of them. I don't like onions. But yeah, that do. makes sense. So feel free if you guys are watching right now, feel free to drop any uh, comments or questions like into the chat and we can kind of go through some of those as well. So we're on here just to be able to help answer some questions, trying to walk through like some of the aspects that we're going to be bringing to the table in this May 20th event that we're going to be doing in Orlando, Florida. Where we're going to be all three of us coming together for an all day event to be able to help people actually heal from narcissistic abuse, to be able to break out of the trauma bonds, to be able to get through the cognitive distance, understand what's true and actually get to the place where the rumination and no longer is something that's actively controlling you on a day-to-day basis. So that's part of the reason why we're on here uh, just in general, but also to be able to let you guys know about the event that's coming up. So feel free to ask any questions and we can drop those, uh, put those up on the chat as well, uh, just as we're going there. Um, okay, yeah, your explanation of heroin and trauma bond really explained it very well. Thank you. It hit home for me. It's been a year. Okay, awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotta cut this I don't want to go back with him, but why can't I emotionally set it aside and try to move forward? Uh, or I don't, or I do go forward with baby steps, but my mind is going slow and there are kids involved. So many, ta- so many steps to take in the divorce. So I think it's important to adjust your expectations on what it's going to look like because it's not going to be like, oh, I woke up today and everything is better and I'm totally healed and I'm over it. It really is baby steps. It really is just small, consistent steps every single day towards growth and healing and moving forward with no contact or boundaries or whatever it is. It really is like that. You cannot race through this, right? Like this is a marathon. You're in it for the long game. Yeah. And baby steps are still steps, y'all. It's better Mm -hmm. to take baby steps than to take no steps because especially when you have kids involved, uh, those kids will appreciate those baby steps because if, if eventually you get out of it, 
but a lot of times they might grow up and not appreciate the inaction. Like, well, I was afraid to take it a long time, and they're like, yeah, I'm an adult yeah. now. I don't see it that way. And then you're gonna have a you you're gonna be talking to one of us in the coaching session, like, how do I get my kids to talk to me? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I like to look at it like a book. I like to look at any journey like a book, even if it's a small step. If you read one page a day you'll move forward in that book, you'll get that book finished. Like, even if you read one word that day, you will be farther in the book than you were yesterday. That is very true. Like constant, constant progression, like always taking like one step, one direction. Mm-hmm. It's better just to look away and not come back or else they will do the same things all over again eventually. Hey, if they're really seeking help and doing the work, that's a different story. So yeah, there's a lot of people that say they want to do the work, especially when you say that you're going to leave. That's typically when the narcissist will all of a sudden magically change or magically want to do the work. Uh, I had someone that I worked with and um, they were broken up and had moved on in one sense, no contact. And he finally like came back into her life. And she like said like, yeah, like we wouldn't have worked out if you had gone to therapy that we might have. The next day he booked six months of therapy. Like, boom, Mm -hmm. like I'll do whatever I need to do. And you'll hear the narcissist say that like, whatever it takes. Like I'll do whatever it takes to actually get to the place where I'll be with you, where like the image will still be just right. Or the child support will be less enough. So I have to pay a bunch of money to you. Like (laughs) there's a lot of different like pieces there that narcissists will do like anything to be able to make sure that they look good or that they keep their image in front of you or in front of other people. And I think it's important as the victim that we're not saying things like that to them. Like, well, I can't get back with you until you apologize for that. Cause it's like, okay, you just gave them exactly the blueprint that they need to manipulate you. It's not, I know that the intention is like, this is what I need you to change for us to be healthy, but they don't work that way. So they're like, okay, this is what I need to do to manipulate you. And that's it. Super easy. Yeah. And that's why a lot of narcissists like want to get to know you so well at the very beginning, because you're giving them the blueprint. You're like literally laying it all out of like, this is me. This is my weakness. This is my vulnerability. It's like here. And they're like, sweet. Thank you so much. Now I can manipulate you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, one thing I also tell people a lot in these situations and when you're dealing with toxic narcissistic people is to, like I said, make them earn your information. Just don't give them the blueprint to manipulate you. Mm-hmm. And if somebody tells you narcissist or not, I'll do whatever you want. Listen to that statement. Repeat it to yourself. I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you mm-hmm. want. I'll do whatever you want, which means I don't want to do it. You do see what I'm saying? It's something as simple as listening to people. Because I tell this to people all the time, narcissistic people tend to tell themselves, you just have to listen to what they say. You just have to listen. You know, they'll tell them themselves, I'll do whatever you want, which means you want it. I don't want it. You know, I'll go to therapy. Mm-hmm. You want me to go to therapy? I'll go do it. Six months. You know, right. mm-hmm. that type not of not actual, you know? not actual because they want to, not actual like, yeah, change. It, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just not, yeah. not and more, they want to. And more than just like listening to them, you have to then believe it. You have to believe them when they tell you the truth, because as an empath, we love to come in and justify and give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, well, we could have meant it that way. It's like, mm-hmm. just believe them. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, we'll be no, that's, no, that's, that's huge for sure. So if you guys are at the place where you're struggling with the rumination, the intrusive thoughts, and you're struggling with like the stories that you've told yourself over a period of time that leaves you stuck or feeling like you're not good enough to actually get away from toxic mm-hmm. person. These are some of the things that we're going to be addressing when we do our in-person event. Uh, May the 20th is going to be in Orlando, Florida, uh, an entire day that you're going to be with us uh, working through a bunch of these things in like a small group, helping you actually process the things that are going on inside your life, inside your heart, inside your mind. They excuse keeping you stuck uh, in it with a toxic person. So we've got some cool stuff uh, coming up uh, as far as like what's going to actually be there at the workshop. Uh, Lee and I've got some new shirts that are going to be coming out. So we're going to be having those at the workshop as well, uh, along with journals um, that we've got going on uh, that are going to be there too, to be able to give to you guys uh, for everybody who's able to attend. So we're really excited about that. We've got the link uh, in the comments, uh, also the links in the bio of the video as well. Would love to be able to have you guys attend uh, and just be able to see like how we actually help help people break free, how we actually help mm-hmm. coach people through the process of breaking free from the trauma bond or getting out of like the cognitive dissonance or working through the aspect of like developing self love back into your life mm-hmm. to be able to move to a place where you have clarity of who you actually are and the direction that you need to go. You know, and helping people get that heart and that mind in alignment because a lot of people struggle with that right there. And I tell people, if your heart and your mind are not aligned, 
your heart will lead you to get lead you down the path of getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's literally just logic because your heart is in your look what my heart is at. My heart is in my chest. You keep, my heart cannot see. It cannot hear. It cannot smell. It cannot touch. It can only feel. Right. Mm-hmm. But my brain is up here is the access to my eyes, real realistic stuff. My eyes can see, my nose can smell, my ears can hear and things like that. So you want to get these aligned. Your your eyes have your intuition. Your heart your, your heart is going to just oh, your your eyes will lead you to the edge of a cliff and you will look down on it. You'll be like, mm, "I'm not jumping down there." But your heart will be like, "Oh, the, the love of our life is down there." And then you jump. You know, mm-hmm. cuz your heart just takes you over there. <laughs> I, I love them. Jump. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Philip. That's so true. Uh, Philip says there's only about one year together. I'm finding it the hardest to move forward. The covert narcissist broke something deep in me. Never felt like this before. Struggling to find a solution. Mm-hmm. I feel like you got to stop making it seem like one year is a short period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, mm-hmm. step, that's step one right there. It's one year is 365 days. So let's just say I ate Doritos and ice cream and some some dirty some dirty stuff every single day for 365 days. You're going to start seeing physical changes in my body. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to, my energy is going to get down. So why would it, it makes sense that you have 365 days of something going on in your mind is going to change how your mind, how your mind feels, how you see the world and mm-hmm. things like that. So 365 days is a very, very long time for anything. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it takes 90, it, well, it takes 28 days to build a habit or break a habit or something like that. So 365 days of it, how many habits right. can you break in 365 days, 10, right. 12, 13, 14, something like that. So, you know, the time is a big deal right there. A year in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And in abuse and trauma. You know, that, that does something to you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Doesn't do with mind. Like I say, it's just your mind right. if your body's gonna change with three hundred and sixty five days of poison and toxicity in it, imagine what your mind is going what's gonna happen to your mind in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Twenty twenty five years. So I was talking, I was talking with someone the other day and there was a therapist that also works with other people and that, that have like, um, that have been with the narcissist and stuff like that. And she stumbled across someone who I'd been with a narcissist for, I think it was like 67 years. Wow. And like, he just passed away like six months ago. I was like, it's, that's insane. Uh, like how long and and it's over a period of time. You get to the place where you feel like that's normal. You feel like that's what you have to do even though it's it's awful even though like it's yep. that constant abuse yeah and if you feel stuck in the healing like it, you know i'm never going to get out of this and i don't i don't know how to move forward and what steps do i take i want to bring it back to that book analogy where it's just a page a day even if it's a word a day you know what mm-hmm. steps to take right there's there's so many things that we spell like go to therapy read a self help book meditate journal process go to the gym whatever it is pick one of those things every single day or at least every week or whatever and you just keep doing it day after day week after week consistently over time and you'll see growth it just isn't going to be very apparent overnight mm-hmm. very true well thank you all for tuning in if you guys want to be able to get uh to the orlando event you want to be able to check that out you can click the link that's in the bio or that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen or that's in the comments of realmotivationscoaching.com slash workshop we'd all love for you to be able to attend to be able to hear we have a lot of stuff that we're bringing to the table trying to be able to help break you free as quickly and efficiently as possible to be able to show you the tools and the tricks to be able to move forward in your healing uh to be able to continue move forward in that direction so Super excited and thank y'all for having us. Appreciate it, y'all. See y'all in uh, Orlando. Mm. Bye. See you later.